Well, hello and welcome. Um, um, today, what I want to show us, we don't have a lot of time. I'm going to go over the techniques. And basically, well, first of all, I should introduce myself, right? My name is Carmen Ballering, and I'm one of the instructors at the Event Decorating Academy in Miami. And we teach people how to decorate for parties. So we do balloon decorating, fabric draping. One of my favorite classes is props. Um, we make props for every event. So once you learn the techniques, you can pretty much use them for different themes. So starting with the class, <clears throat> we use the regular styrofoam, the cheap kind, but it's not called styrofoam. Um, the thickness, it depends on what the project that you're doing. Um, and this, because we're going to kind of simulate like a wall, and you're going to put it over a wall. It doesn't need to be too thick unless you really want those blocks to come out. Like if you want to see that uh, the, the, where you put the grout, um, you want them to really look like more like cobblestones or things like that, then you get thicker, two inch, two and a half. Um, but other than that, you could use uh, one inch. <clears throat> so when you're working on a, let me see if I do this without falling off the stage. <laughs> when um, you want to cover a wall, if you have a, a retail store and you want to do a display for Halloween, you want to um, take it and not make it so pretty because it's for Halloween. If you were to do a wall, um, like for Alice in the Wonderland or something, you would do a castle, then you want to make sure that your lines are straight. But other than that, we take the styrofoam and um, I cut and I get pieces out so it, my, the edges of the walls are not straight because we want to make this look like really old and scary. So you take any kind of knife and you cut pieces off. And this is really easy to work with. It's messy, but easy to work with. And you want to make big cuts. Like the block is missing a piece, okay? Once you do that, you want to measure your blocks. So that, again, depending on how big you want your blocks to be, they could be uh, cement blocks. They could be like cobblestones. So you could do it like uh, um, bricks. You take a measurement, and I use a T-square. And with the T-square, I decide how big my blocks are going to be. And I start making my lines. So I don't know if you guys can see that I already, you could do it with a pencil, but it's not really necessary because if you don't want to put too much glue in your grout, then you will see your lines. So I'd rather take a, a brush or a pencil or something, the back of the pencil, and um, score, OK? Just like that. And uh, make your measurements. So these are about. 12 by 18, Against they don't have to be a specific size. And um, the way I get that technique is that we're going to burn it. So I want to burn all the edges. I want to burn all the lines. And you could use a wood burner. There are some carving tools, the hot carving tools that you could use. Or you could cheat and go with something really cheap like what I have. Who knows what this is? Pumpkin carver. As long as they get hot, it needs to get hot to melt the styrofoam. But this is a solder, soldering machine. And yeah, that's what it is. It's cheaper and it works. So, and this is gonna take a little bit to to heat. Now, what we want to do is you want to put the ruler and follow your lines and carve it. Um, all the way, okay? Now, I'm not gonna do it with a ruler because I already did the, my lines and I want this to look scary so I don't need to have straight lines so I'm just gonna go in and carve in away. Should have um, put it in. This takes a little bit time to heat. So where that goes, we are going to keep breaking our styrofoam. You wanna, um, where did my, there she go. Give it a minute there to, um, to, so it could get cold. I like to burn some of my pieces 
inside, but I also like to cut them because if you want to make something like it's a hole or that your block is really chipped, you use a knife. Okay. Now some of those, they're just burned with the with the tool. Okay. We'll do that. And I'm going to paint, and I use acrylic paint to do this. If you know how to use spray paint, you could get a really nice effect with spray paint or with airbrush. But if not, you could use just regular cheap acrylic paints, and that works too. Now the techniques, they vary. You could do the sponge painting. You could just uh, smudge it all in there. Because it's Halloween, you could get away with a lot. So let's see. OK. Is this connected? Is it? Yeah, it's not warming up. I'm sorry. Oh, it wasn't turned on. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully we'll give it a minute there and get that rolling. Um, meanwhile, I use sea sponges. And when you want to work with sea sponges, you want to make sure they're wet. Okay? And um, I'm going to need a nice brush to clean my nails. <laughs> but you want to use gloves. And what I do is I just take a little, little palette, or you could take a plate, and combine all your colors, and then just go in. We're going to do this in a minute as soon as I burn it, and just go in there um, into your techniques. This one is really good to do just sponge painting because you could get all the different techniques and different uh, texture on your, on your brick with the sponge. So I don't kill myself with a brush trying to brush little by little. I'm just, I'm just going to go in and try to get that and then do my details on top. So it's getting warm. Let's see. Come on, quickly, quickly. There it goes. So depending how you turn this tool is the burn that's going to do on the styrofoam. So if you, if you guys can see it, if I, if I put it down, it's going to make bigger, bigger burns on the styrofoam. Okay. So we want to make it like the brick is really broken. And I'm going to do a couple of these. And then we're going to paint them so you see how, how it goes really quick. So you could pretty much make a big wall in an hour. This is pretty quick. So if you had a uh, two inch styrofoam and you wanted these blocks to really pop out, all you have to do is put your tool in and make deeper, deeper cuts, okay? But you can't do this with a uh, half inch or three quarter because you'll be able to see through. <laughs> so it has to be two inches, a minimum, okay? You pair your lines. I'm trying to get this, let me get this way. And this goes smoother. Once the tool is really hot, it goes really quick. But since I'm pushing it because we don't have a lot of time. OK. 
Now, even though we made these, the styrofoam still looks like styrofoam, right? <clears throat> so, the way I give the uh, texture to this styrofoam is with a heat gun, and we're going to do that now. I want you guys to, there's the one in the back if you could see. One more here. Okay. So we got that. Now we go with the heat gun, and we're going to go over all the cuts first. And this is a heat gun, not a blow dryer. And don't try to blow dry your hair with this either. It will hurt. <laughs> you want to take all the edges. And if you guys see what the heat gun is doing to the styrofoam, see what it does? Now you go up and down to give that um, texture on the whole block. You see that? So if you're making tombstones or any kind of walls or anything that wants to look creepy, it, this is a great technique. Once you learn how to make this, you could make unlimited things. Okay. And we're going to go all over the whole piece so then I could paint and you could see how quickly I could paint this. And the beauty about this is that not all the blocks need to look the same. So if you're not a great painter, you're not an artist, you could still do this. The important about this is when you're using stars to make sure that you cut all the edges because if you leave them all square the way they come, people are going to say, oh yeah, that's styrofoam. I have made some of these walls that people walk in and they think they're real. Cool idea, huh? <coughs> you can make cobblestones with this. I made a, an entrance for a cemetery, all in cobblestones, and we cut the cup the with the uh, burner. I burned the the round. They're not kind of round, but you know, you give them all those shapes. <coughs> Sorry, and then I made this with the texture, and people walked in, they didn't even know. I'm like, they thought there was real stones. I mean, how nice they looked. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a couple of colors of brown, <coughs> the lighter and the shade. And to get this really quick, I go in like this. to give some shade to it, make them darker in some edges, and then go back and get in there. Now when you're painting cobblestones, cobblestones are like sponge painting. Okay? You, you paint those like if it was you were sponge painting your wall in your house. <clears throat> 
So let's get them in a little lighter. Get them done. Let's say you want them. <clears throat> the thing is to paint them really quickly. They don't have to be perfect. And then you take a brush, you could pretty much paint your, your part of the grout first if you want. But I like to put it in a darker color when it's for a haunted house so it could look a little dramatic. In black or gray, dark gray. <clears throat> and when you paint the, out, the, the lines, the paint tends to get on all the edges of your block. So I always like to go back and so they're in. They're not quite <clears throat> making a line in my block because I don't want that line. Mm -hmm. Same to go here. Now if you choose to make a gray and white, just gray wall <clears throat> with a little touches of black, you could paint the whole, all the grout in white. You do that first, and then paint your blocks. It's really the colors that you choose. Just want to make sure that they look old. Get that. <clears throat> I'm gonna go on the other side. I'm gonna try to paint this quickly so you guys can take a picture of it. It's hard to paint here because I don't wanna. <laughs> you know, nobody's the back, but hard to paint. You right, if I do it in the table, you guys will not be able to see it. <clears throat> you could also use those square sponges, the black ones. <clears throat> but I don't want it to get filled completely. It's good when you see a little bit of white. Sea sponge sucks a lot of paint, so every now and then you want to clean it. I like to do this with um with airbrush. If you guys don't know how to do airbrush, this is a great way to do it. 
If you guys want to use also a spray paint, a good spray paint for the, this styrofoam is uh, Design Master. The other brands will eat it. Well, if that's the look you're looking for, then that's fine. <laughs> but, <clears throat> yeah, my sponge is super black. Let's get my too quick. Put a little more of, of the lighter. Lighten up this a little. <clears throat> this technique is hard to get all of them look the same. But if you work with three colors, You guys think you could do that? <laughs> it's um, it's really easy. The technique is easy, and when you're doing a um, a fireplace, it's the same technique. The only thing is that you want to do your lines a lot closer and make your bricks, and they don't pair. So one line will be here and the other one there. And just the same way, yeah. So you do your your real box. So <clears throat> so that's. Pretty much my demonstration for the technique. We don't have time. What are we doing on time? Five minutes? Okay. Um, and uh, but that's you learn the technique pretty much. It's all go home and practice, and you'll be able to make these again for the cobblestones. If you get a paper, or get in the computer or a shape of a cobblestone, you could print it out and cut it, put it on your styrofoam, and trace it. And once you have those traces, it's easy to cut and use it, keep your template. And uh, for the bricks, the same. And you'll be able to do many different walls kind of with the same technique and uh, <clears throat> do the burning. But this one, you need to do it straight. <laughs> when it's cobblestones and you want to do two walls, you want to make sure that um, the drawing that you have, on this piece of the styrofoam is the same one on, because if not, your walls are going to look different. So if you're using three or four different shapes of the cobblestone, put them together and um, draw them, put them on the more, keep going down with the same template and then do the same one for the other side. Because those usually are used for the entrance of cemeteries and stuff. So if you have a display that you're having cemetery stuff in your windows, you want to make sure that those two pieces um, are the same. And the top usually has a different design but the two sides, you want them to be the same. So I will use the same templates on both. <clears throat> and then for this, I mean, I do one light, one dark, one, and it doesn't really matter, and it looks really nice in the windows. And people are going to stop and look at your window and say, wow, <laughs> that, that's really cool. So I hope you guys learned something and put it to practice because it's a good seller to have this and have some of your Halloween decorations in the front, always for Halloween. Not only for Halloween, you could use it for a lot of different uh, uh, seasonal stuff. Um, you could paint houses, like for Easter, with the same technique and make like a little house with bricks and, and so on for Mother's Day and make it like, like a little house with flower pots in the front. So there is a lot of use for this technique. Okay? I'm sorry? <clears throat> How do you mount? Well, this styrofoam, so basically if you... Um, you take another piece of styrofoam and use it as the base and take two pieces of triangle of the same styrofoam and just glue it so it goes like this, okay. it would stay. Okay. Um, you could also use a wood base, kind of the same thing with the wood base and you make it. If you're going to be doing them constantly, I would suggest that you make that same base but with wood and then you just attach them to the wood. Um, <clears throat> they're very easy in my store. When I had my store, my display, I had hooks in my ceiling. So I had my window displays had, had a ceiling. So I had little hooks. And I will put hooks here, we'll hot glue them. And I will put a fishing line, I'll tie them, and nobody will see that. And then the wall came from the ceiling, so it wasn't really on. So if you had tile, you could even make it. 
You could use magnets if you have tiles there, yes. And because they're so lightweight, they, they don't weigh anything. And you could hang them from the ceiling and the 10 pound magnet will work perfect. But if you have, if you wanna put some other pieces on your wall, then I will use the 20 pound magnet um, the, from Click Click. Those are the ones you have, yes. Um, <clears throat> because I, I did a, um, one of these display for one of the booths a couple of years ago and they used their claims, you know, the, the, of the monsters coming out. And you could actually put them in the front of the walls that you make. So if they look like they're coming out of that wall and you make the door and the windows cut out the windows. So it seems like there's some monsters and stuff coming out of them. And it works great from the ceiling. I used to do all my displays from the ceiling because they're styrofoam. They're easier to stand from the ceiling than from the floor. And if you're going to um, do them to the wall, like if inside your store, uh, duct tape or Velcro. <coughs> I'm sorry. The sh here? If I'm doing the cobblestones? A tombstone. Yeah, I use a, a foam cutter. So if you have a machine of a foam cutter or one, a hand one, it could work. So you make the shape, get a template, make the shape, and then cut it out. <coughs> You don't want to use this if you want really nice um, lines. You need to use a, a, a hot cutter machine. This is for when you want it like that, you know, to show some texture, like it's a, a wood, broken wood, a broken stone, sorry. Is there a supply source that you could recommend so that you can sell crop-related tools? Oui. You guys do? <laughs> yeah, you do. Um, Yes, anything, anything that we use in our class for, to making props and, and stuff, you could get them. We actually um, are getting our catalog up uh, by the end of the month. Um, a lot of our students were having problems finding a lot of the pieces to make their props, so we decided to start carrying some of them because we will send them to people, but when you're making props, they sell them by the cases, and you, know, you don't want to buy 12 for these or 12 for that. So we sell them to our students, buy the ones, or if they want buy the dozen too, but it will be on the website. So if you go to our website, in a few weeks, um, there's gonna be a link to the Event Mart. It's called Event Mart, and that's from our school. So you'll be able to get uh, most of the supplies in there. And, and we're gonna be having some <clears throat> um, instruction sheets of some of the pieces, some of the things that we do and the supplies that you need to make it. Because a lot of people want to make that wall, and they call us, well, how can I make that wall? So these are all the pieces that you, all the supplies you need to make that wall. And I'm trying to work on a little videos to put them online to help people on, on you know, they you're buying the materials. But yeah, there, I mean, a lot of these, you could buy them in a hardware store too, if you need them, and quickly, some of them. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you. We have a short time, you know, when we're at the school, we have so much time. I, I, we, we teach how to scale, and like if you have this little picture and you want to make it in big and, and you need, okay, I need a 25-foot, you know, entrance. How can I do it? I only have this little tiny picture. We teach you how to scale in the school. So you'll learn how to get that, <clears throat> that big and be able to cut it. And we'll teach you how to draw and, on grids and all of that stuff to do a lot of freehand. We get people that say, oh, we, we don't have a an, uh, uh, an hair of art in our, in our body. <laughs> and they go in and, you know, they do it. Because we have little easy methods to making a lot of techniques. And this props, we have so many different techniques. This is just like one. <laughs> so. But if they're good sellers. <clears throat> Any other questions? Are you guys in the party business or Halloween? Halloween? Store? Okay. Yeah, these are great to put on the store displays because you have to pay so much money to get the displays and buy the displays and put them there. You just make them. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you.